Welcome to the ESI Africa studio. Today I have two members with me from UTC in America. Uh, Bobby Harris, who is the Vice President, and uh, Roger Byron, who is the Chairman. Welcome to our studio. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank it's you. an honor to be here. We're going to be talking about smart communities and what that means for the African community as well. Uh, Bobby, I'd like to start with you in terms of why is UCT now invested in the African market? And that's a brilliant question because we get asked that quite a lot. We, people will say, why are you here? Uh, why should the Utilities Technology Council care and want to be involved in Africa? The, the answer is quite simple. The opportunity uh, to share knowledge, to share knowledge not only across the African utilities that are our members, but also from other utilities that are our members. The technology challenges around the world are very similar. When you begin to talk about information and communications technology, those challenges are still the same, whether it's cybersecurity, ITOT convergence, um, spectrum, access to spectrum to make all of these smart devices talk. You can't have smart without telecommunications. The challenges are the same. UTC is so dedicated uh, to the African market because we see it as a huge opportunity, not only to engage with the utilities here that are doing quite remarkable things, but also to share the knowledge that folks in uh, Europe have that are members of UTC, in Canada, the United States, Latin America. Uh, we have all of these resources and it's the proper thing to do to invest in Africa. And two years ago when our board voted, yes, we want to, to put a presence in Africa, we celebrated and we're just thrilled with the opportunity to be here. That's so, fantastic yeah. having yes. UTC in, the, in um, our African utilities and making a difference. Thank so you. Roger, let's talk about telecommunications and uh, how this is advancing smart communities in Africa. Right. So uh, not only telecom, but other information and in communications technologies are so important as enablers for all of those applications for smart cities. So they, they need that connectivity. And, and, that's, and, and really that's the first, one of the first steps in order to, to connect all those devices to provide all those services that are associated with, with the smart cities uh, in, uh, initiatives. So do you have an example uh, of a, a, an African utility that is really advancing to this level? I think Orongo Red would be the one that I would say has already moved forward because they're doing telecommunications out to their substations and that substation automation they're putting in the layer of communication that's going to be needed in order to connect all the other devices. So uh, the smart metering side, um, and we're seeing smart metering and prepaid metering, that's a piece of it too, and that's happening at ESCOM. That's happening at many of the utilities in Africa. Um, but uh, I think Orongo Red is the one that comes to my mind first, um, of one that seems to be moving forward. Um, and you know, just a plug for them, their CEO, uh, Professor Mamengo is actually the Africa UTC chairman of the board. So he recognizes this interconnectivity um, and we recognize that they are doing the advances that need to be shared with other utilities as well. So Roger, um, looking at uh, these systems, uh, what do you best advise a, a, an African utility in terms of where to start, how to advance themselves with technology? Yeah, you. Um it's really good to have a plan and a roadmap, but don't wait for that to be fully developed before you begin implementing. Find ways, uh, use your assets that you have today, begin to build on those assets, have them be a part of that plan as you go. But you can do this in steps and, and build out the capability, build the connectivity, and continue to add that value uh, as you go. So it, it's, uh, it, there, there are some basic value delivered from just having that telecom connectivity and then over time along that plan you can continue to add this capacity and capability along the way. So let's talk about uh, the future and where you see UTC worldwide. We'll, we'll just continue to move up this value chain providing the platform and the forum for utilities to share these use cases, share their problems because they're common around the globe. And, and we, we see this community getting stronger and broader 
as we share information, as we learn from each other, and then and it, we have build this base of information that's so important. And, and uh, the problems are the same, the challenges are the same, the timeline's not necessarily the same, so there are opportunities to learn from others who've been there just a few steps earlier, and, uh, and it, make, it, it makes it easier to learn, and then, they, then these uh, new entrants then provide additional information that build that even stronger base of information. And uh, just lastly, water utilities, they are also part of this uh, UTC challenge. Yes, yes. Yeah. absolutely, absolutely. And uh, water utilities uh, around the world are quickly beginning to add the smart devices, the smart metering, the leak detection, the quality of water, the pressure monitoring. All of these pieces, again, require that telecommunications. The water utilities can learn from the electric utilities that have done it, but they don't have to, to wait. They can start now. The challenge with water infrastructure, is, as we all know clearly, is most of it is so old, leaks can't be found because of the, the pressure around the pipe underground. So how do you detect all those? The, thankfully, the technology exists. As long as you have that telecommunications piece, those, all of those devices will narrow down your search. You can fix those leaks. You can deliver quality. And on the other side, the utilities can now be paid for every drop of water. The value of water, we were just speaking earlier this morning, there are some places where water is so cheap to deliver clean water, the people who are paying for it don't understand what it really cost to deliver that same glass of, of clean water. So we need to share that knowledge so that consumers can control it. This goes back to smart cities. I want to know on my iPhone how much water my house is consuming, how much energy my house is consuming. Water is, is at the forefront. They're poised now because of the crisis. Um, but, and it's a crisis around the world. This is a global crisis. It's not just a Cape Town or just an Africa crisis. This is a, a global water crisis. And we have the technology. It's part of, of UTC. It's part of telecommunications. And it's frankly part of our DNA. We're going to talk about it every day from the mountaintop. <laughs> right, Paul, it's been very interesting talking with you today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much you. for the opportunity. We're happy to be here. Thank you for watching. I'm Nicolette Pomba van editor of ESI Africa, broadcasting from the African Utility Week studio.